Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the news channel. So I'm going to discuss the economy and break this down. So here is a report that came out. It says the Federal Reserve officials have said they're increasingly confident. Look at those words, increasingly confident. That means they're more confident than they were prior. That they've nearly tamed inflation. Oh, that's great. That's great news. Inflation has been really, really, really tough on Americans. It's been terrible. And they've said they've nearly tamed inflation. Now it's the health of the job market that's starting to draw their concern. With inflation cooling towards its 2% target, 2% target, look at that. I mean, there, yeah, I've just figured out it's cooling towards its 2% target. Look at that. The pace of hiring, slowing, and the unemployment rate edging up, the Fed is poised to cut its benchmark interest rate next month from its 23-year high. So they have it all figured out. Economy strong. And that's another thing. Let's take a look at the economy. If you look at that, 4.3%. They have this all figured out. They said it's edging up. Where did it edge up? It's only 4.3%. That's nearly full employment. You have a very strong economy. Inflation is cooling towards its 2% target. They're increasingly confident that they've nearly tamed inflation. Everything is great. Yeah, take a look at this. Workforce participation rate remains below pre-pandemic levels. There's a labor shortage. This economy is so strong that employers can't even find enough workers. Imagine that. What a strong economy. I mean, this is unprecedented. This is, I mean, it's clicking on all cylinders. You've got low inflation. You've got a really strong economy. They're ready to cut rates. They have it all figured out. However, something doesn't make sense here. Credit card debt in the U.S. hits all-time high of $930 billion. Okay, so let me try to figure this out. You have a really strong economy with nearly full employment. You have a labor shortage because employers can't even find enough workers. I've said they're increasingly confident that they've nearly tamed inflation and towards the 2% target. However, at the same time, Americans are broke. They are facing all-time credit card debt. That doesn't make sense. If you have such a strong economy and people are nearly full, the whole country, if the whole country is nearly fully employed, why are they so broke? Why are they riddled with debt? This is credit card debt. Credit card is some of the worst debt to have. It's very high interest rates and they can't even cover their cost of living. But why is that? And also, what, what are they spending it on? Why do they have all this debt? Where is all this debt coming from? Well, let's take a look at this. Walmart. U.S. consumers weary from high prices and inflation. Oh, wait a minute. High prices and inflation? They just said they're increasingly confident that they've nearly tamed inflation. That doesn't really compare and contrast that well, does it? But they're still flocking to Walmart. Why are they flocking to Walmart? They're flocking to Walmart because Walmart sells food. They sell essentials. Walmart is a non-discretionary retail for the most part. And that's where they're spending their credit cards on. They are spending and going into debt just to put food on the table. That's what's going on here. Now take a look at this. Target cut prices on 5,000 products. Now it's back with a big earnings beat. Slash prices on milk, meat, and bread in this inflation-battered economy. Inflation-battered economy. However, here it says they're increasingly confident that they've nearly tamed inflation. So which one is it? Is inflation nearly tamed? Or is it an inflation-battered economy? One report conflicts the other. You're talking about the economy here. This is real economics going on. This is people buying stuff. This is consumers, all right? This is actually what's happening in the real world. And it says here that they're pulling back. They're worried from high prices and inflation are pulling back on spending, right? That it's an inflation-battered economy. This is Walmart. This is Target. This is non-discretionary spending. The credit card debt, right? That's where it's going. It's going to buy groceries at Walmart. It's going to buy groceries at Target. See? Earnings beat. From what? What are they selling? Milk, meat, bread. That's where the prices were cut. Let's take a look here. Home Depot lowered its comparable sales outlook for 2024, projecting a 3 to 4% decline from 2023. Lack of existing house sales is a headwind as remodeling and home repair projects are often initiated alongside home buying and selling. Okay, so basically people are pulling back. They're pulling back from buying big ticket items like appliances, right? Because they're broke. 
They're busy spending that credit card debt on groceries. They don't have the money. Let's take a look at this. As far as inflation with their so-called 2% target, right? This is just the cost of housing. I mean, housing was up last year substantially. Last year was a big inflation year. Now take a look at this. Prices are up 5.7% from the prior year. So just housing loan, the 2% target, they say is a bunch of things that they mix together, right? To basically to calculate inflation. Well, this is an essential. I mean, this is shelter. So this indicates a lot of inflation. There's a lot of inflation here. An inflation battered economy, right? That's what it says. So there's a lot of inflation and inflation continues to rise. Debt continues to rise. I mean, it's all indicating that. You have non-discretionary spending, such as places like Walmart or Target, right? Where people are buying groceries and they're going into debt doing it while at the same time, discretionary, like Home Depot, people are cutting back. Lowe's, Lowe's sees sales drop. Cuts 2024 outlook as consumers put off home improvement projects because they're broke. They don't have money. They both reported recently the result was worse than the 3.3% decline. Rival Home Depot reported a week ago for the quarter. Discretionary, right? This is discretionary spending. People looking to do home improvement projects. They're putting this off because they don't have the money. They're broke. And then you have this labor market that they're talking about. See, unemployment, you got to understand, you got to really read this. Why is unemployment, you know, so low? Question is, what kind of jobs are these, right? Are these jobs that cover the cost of living? When you have an unemployment rate that's so low, you would think things are going so good. But here's the problem. If the wages that they're receiving don't cover the cost of living, then these jobs don't really mean anything. A person's going to decide they might as well stay home. They might as well go on welfare. The wages don't cover the cost of living. I mean, if you're making $800 a week and your rent and your groceries and your health care with a family is going to exceed that, then why work? It doesn't make any sense. And you have to, you know, if somebody has children, they have to find a sitter. They have to pay that person to watch their kids. And for women, let's say they're getting a job where they're, you know, they have to do their makeup, their hair, and they have to buy clothing, and it could be more expensive. It's time consuming. They'd rather stay home with their kids. Well, why do they have to go out on the job, and get up early in the morning and struggle for what? If your wages don't even cover the cost of living. So this is not a strong market. The unemployment rate is much higher than this. If you have jobs that don't cover the cost of living, that's not a real job. And this also explains why there's a labor shortage. Why is there a labor shortage? There's a labor shortage because who's going to work a job that doesn't cover the cost of living? Why is this happening? It's because of inflation. Why does inflation happen? The government spends too much. They print too much money. They regulate the economy. This is the problem. This is the problem. You're always going to get inflation. And inflation is the number one cause of people not being able to cover their costs of living. And you're looking at a stagflation economy. You're looking at an economy that has high inflation and high unemployment. This basically describes a perilous time for the U.S. economy and American standard of living. So I would like to know your thoughts. Feel free to leave comments. Please like, share, and subscribe, and thank you for tuning in.